Oh, man, John, what are you going to do? These sales are pitiful. I'm not sure I can actually survive on this. I must be kidding myself. Why would anybody want to buy my stuff over the big name brands? I don't know. Maybe it's just time to give up the dream of working for myself and making a... Hey, knock that off. You're going to be okay. Do you think you're the only one that's ever started a business from nothing? Do you think you're the only one that's ever had an idea and you're trying to make it into a dream come true, a career that you can retire on and maybe pass down to your kids? Get real. No, really. It's time to get real. Realistic. What's up, guys? John Conley here, UncleJohnSoap.com. As we come into the new year, ending 2021 and coming into 2022, just wanted to give you a few words of hopefully encouragement and Maybe a little useful advice. The key here is have your dreams. Work on your dreams. Work on making them a reality, but at the same time, be realistic in your journey and in your goals. I'm not saying don't set lofty goals and things like that. If you don't set big goals, you don't you don't achieve anything. But at the same time, you know, if I have a dream tonight about going out and starting a widget company, I'm going to produce and market and make a brand for this widget, and I'm going to be successful. And by the end of 2022, I'll have made a million dollars profit. Yeah, that's not realistic. It could happen. But it all depends on the market for widgets and, you know, who's looking to buy them? Who already makes them? Do they make quality ones? Is there something you can add that would set you apart to improve the widget, to improve on somebody else's design? Do you know anything about marketing? Do you know anything about business? These are all things that I learned as I started my business. And I'm still learning every day. I learn something new. And that's tip number one. And there's there's no real particular order to these tips. But tip number one for me is never stop learning. You always have to be willing to learn something new. Learn from your mistakes. Learn from other people's successes and failures. Learn. You always have to be kind of hungry to learn. You don't want to ever go stagnant. I'm not saying you always have to be making, you know, million dollar improvements to your business and things like that. But, you know, it's the little things that add up over time. Whether it's recipe design. Whether it's recipe implementation, maybe, you know, maybe there's, you're, you're working with certain colors and they just never quite come out right. You know, get tips and tricks, reach out to an experienced soap maker, uh, royalty soaps. Dude, I don't know if she answers questions specifically, but reach out to her and maybe she'll do a video about something, but she can give those tips and tricks because she has the experience. And if she doesn't, she'll research it and do a video. I'd say reach out to me, except it takes me three months to get one video out. Not very consistent. Sorry about that. Had a customer coming in the store, and I just happened to notice when I went back and reviewed the footage where I was just talking about learning and royalty soaps that there was a really annoying tone in the background. And I don't know where it's coming from. I don't remember hearing it audibly in the shop. I mean, it must have been there. It can't just be my imagination. Or maybe. Like I said, never stop learning. Reach out to other people who are more experienced than you. Uh, if they start giving you a ration of you know what, then uh, cut them loose and go to somebody else. You know, I'm not saying their advice is necessarily wrong, but you're less apt to take it seriously or take it to heart or follow advice when it comes from somebody who's just uh, bitter. The second thing I'd like to go back and tell the past Uncle John, be patient. It takes a while to get sales. You're not going to start a business and start being profitable or even making consistent sales overnight. We started in the fall of 2011 making stuff for us, early fall, at home. Then late fall, almost Christmas time, we started actually selling stuff. Now, before you start, I know there's a lot of people out there, especially if you go onto the Facebook soap groups, who are going to say, eh, you should be making soap for a year before you start selling. <laughs> I'm a fast learner with some things. Laundry soap and bath soap and body scrubs were the three main things that I had been working on at that point, and I picked them up like that. So I felt quite confident in my ability to make a good quality product and be able to sell it without melting somebody's skin off or, you know, giving them some anaphylactic reaction. Anyway, it's going to take a while to start getting consistent sales. You're not just going to throw a website up and start selling, you know, a thousand pieces. You probably won't even sell a thousand pieces your first year. 
of whatever it is, soaps, scrubs, shave soaps, beard balms, whatever. Be patient. One of the best things I can tell you about that is don't quit your day job. Start this as a side gig unless you already don't have a job and then just go for it. Do whatever your budget and your time allows. But if you have a job, keep your job. That's what I did. Do this on the side. Do a couple farm markets, a couple craft shows, get known in the area, and uh, you're going you're gonna to be able to sell more stuff face-to-face, especially in the beginning, than you will online. Later on, uh, if you have a huge marketing budget, then you know you can do what Dollar Shave Club and Beard Brand and Dollar Beard Club and all those guys do. They basically build a marketing company, not really a soap or beard product company or shave company. So, eh, but keep your day job. Uh, you don't want to lose that security for, you know, before you even had a chance to get your dream off the ground. The third thing is get out and do something. Get started on something. Now, we mainly here talk about a soap business, but I'm talking about any small crafty business in general. Start something. Make one batch. Give it out to friends, family, get opinions, get some practice under your belt. But once you start getting out to farmers markets and craft shows and meeting people in person, selling your product in person, and then, you know, when they come back, you get feedback from them. It'll help improve your skills with your products your people skills, dealing with customers, uh, dealing with good customers, bad customers, you know, because you're going to have to deal with the gamut. You're going you're gonna to see them all. So just get out there and get started. Number four, don't take anything personally. And I, I've struggled with this one myself quite a bit. Not everybody's going to like your product. You can't please everyone. You can't make an all-encompassing product that everyone's going to love. Whether it's, you know, scents, colors, style, size, Vegan, not vegan, sealed in cellophane, wrapped in paper, or in a box. No matter what you do, you will never be able to hit all the marks with everybody's tastes and ideologies. And you shouldn't try. I'm not saying you need to like go super targeting and niche down to, you know, one soap for one person. But figure out your target audience. Get a range. And go with that. Now, with that being said... Realize that this is a living thing. Your business should never be stagnant to the point where you're never making changes and everything else. You're always going to have to improve and grow and make changes. You know, if your demographics change like they have in this town, I've had to adjust. You know, I make different types of soaps, different scents. I'm not going to take everyone's suggestions, but, you know, I listen to the rumblings, the overall consensus, and I kind of know what works because I listen. Yeah, don't, don't try to cater to everybody because you'll go nuts and broke at the same time. Trust me, I did it. The number five thing I'd like to go back and tell the past Uncle John. Learn marketing. And, you know, there's more to marketing than just buying a newspaper ad or a radio spot. It, it goes a little deeper than that. And again, I'm still learning every day. I don't know everything there is to know about marketing, but marketing yourself can be as simple as social media posts which is something you should do regularly, but don't push yourself out there to the point where you're just ticking everybody off and they get sick of seeing your ads. Uh, and it doesn't have to be ads. It could, you don't have to sell anything. If you're making something one day and it's a really cool looking soap or a cool process or the light hits it just right, snap a quick shot and you know, Instagram I found is a really good resource. Facebook is okay. I usually do an Instagram post and I'll let it share to Facebook, to my business Facebook page. Twitter's not bad, but I find Instagram seems to be one of the better platforms for this kind of stuff. But, you know, there's lots of resources here on YouTube, on Google, about general marketing. You know, what is it? How do you do it? What should you budget? Don't do what I did and just start throwing money at the wall, you know. Oh, all right, we'll do a radio spot. We'll do a newspaper ad. We'll do a newspaper ad with a special for Christmas and this and that. And, you know, Google ads and Facebook ads and don't don't just start willy nilly throwing hundreds and thousands of dollars out there. It's it's not going to work. You will never get the return on investment for that ROI. It just does not work. You have to be more strategic about it. And there are other people who know what they're doing, what they're talking about, and can kind of steer you in the right direction. Now that one, I'm not going to answer questions on because I'm still horrible. At it. But it's something you should learn, and it's something I'm still learning. That still goes back to earlier on when I said learn your target audience. 
in order to be successful at marketing, you have to know who your target audience is so that you can narrow down where you're going to place your focus so that you get the best returns on what you spent for that campaign. Number six, and this ties back to an earlier statement at the beginning of the video, as a matter of fact, be real, be yourself. Don't, don't be this person who has a persona for work and a persona for home. If you're Miss Bubbly Cheery, like the royalty soap lady, cool, go for it. Play it up. If that's one of your strengths and one of your, your personality traits that people are going to attach to and relate to, go with it. But don't be that way at work and then go home and kick the dog. Be real. Be you. I am sort of half and half. I'm a happy guy most of the time. Laid back, happy-go-lucky, you know, whatever. Now, am I also a curmudgeon sometimes? Yes. And that comes out in my videos. I am, I show me. I'm both people. Now, sometimes it depends on moods. Everybody's going to have good days and bad days. Just try not to let your bad days, sometimes you do have to force through, you know. I mean, if I'm having a bad day, I can't yell at every customer that comes in the door and tell them to F off and, you know, go buy your soap somewhere else. That just, that would be horrible. And not fair to them. They didn't do it. So I guess when I say be real, let me readjust this. Be yourself, but if you're having a bad day, keep that part to yourself. But you don't have to be, you know, June Cleaver, you know, fake pasted on smile all the time. And yeah, if you got that reference, you're old. But if you keep it real and you don't say or do anything you don't actually believe in, you will gain a following. Just stay with it and be real. Number seven, and I never did this one. Uh, well, that's not totally true. Don't buy likes or subs or do sub for sub like they do on YouTube a lot of times. That never works. I did do a couple of like for likes when I was brand new to YouTube just because, you know, hey, like my channel and I'll like your channel or whatever, subscribe. Or, and uh, I wasn't, I didn't know what was going on. I just did it. And, you know, but what I found is people will pick up on that eventually. And I never bought subs or got a sub bot or a, a like bot or like re, uh, review bot or anything like that for the website. No, um, because people will notice, they'll pick up on patterns. You know, the names are weird of the users. Uh, they'll see patterns in speech, the way things are written. They'll, and I've noticed this on Amazon. There are certain Amazon stores where they're, they're padding their reviews. And you can tell, you can tell by the, you read each review and it sounds like a family of five who all decided they were going to give reviews for this company for money and they each did three or four under different usernames and but you can tell by the speech patterns and things and it's yeah it's not good it makes you look horrible honestly i'd rather have zero reviews online and zero likes and be honest about it than buy reviews and look like a tool uh -huh. number eight don't be afraid to make changes. Like I said, this is a living, breathing thing. Your business is not, you know, set it and forget it. You're gonna have to adjust, you're gonna have to make changes. Make changes when they need to be made. Don't avoid them. You know, sometimes you gotta think on things for a while. You don't, at the same time, you don't wanna go all willy-nilly, you know, changing everything all the time because then people get confused and frustrated and stop coming back. But, you know, if you made a, a business name in the beginning and a logo and it's a very sentimental thing to you that's there's nothing wrong with that but it may not work for your business so you have to be open to realizing that at some point that maybe it just wasn't a good fit keep that name and that logo set aside for something else and change I did that here now the Uncle John's stuck I don't know why it's stuck it was just a simple thing my brother-in-law walked into the house and was picking his kids up after a play date with my kids and they were all standing there smelling soaps on the drying racks in my living room. And uh, he said, hey, stop messing with Uncle John's soap. My wife and I looked at each other like, simple is good. So we stuck with it. And it just kind of works. Now I'm like everybody's weird fat uncle. But the logo, the original logo, was a fairly, fairly generic Maori design, uh, like tribal design sea turtle. And it worked well for a little while, but it was too generic. And a friend of mine, a photographer friend of mine, helped hook me up with an artist who sketched out a new logo, which was a caricature of me from a photo from the photographer guy, 
and they digitized it, put it together, and you know, it cost me a few hundred dollars in beard products. And uh, it fits. It works well with what I do. But I had to be willing to make that change and not be so set in my ways and so stubborn to say, oh, no, I made this. This is what I'm going to do. Don't do that. At least be willing to listen and hear people out and realize that not every decision you make is going to be a good one. Try to keep your emotions in check and keep them in the background a little bit. It's your baby. It's your business. You're going to have some emotional tie to it, but emotions do not equal good business decisions most of the time. Number nine, don't compare yourself to everybody else. Everybody's different. While there may be some similarities, for the most part, you are an individual. Your business is unique, and that's the way it should be. If you're trying to follow everybody else's trends or styles and everything, you know, people are going to wonder, well, why should I go to them when I can just go to this chain place? Because that's kind of what they modeled after. And this chain place has been around 20 years. This guy's been doing this for six months. I mean, this is your journey and it's going to have to work with you, of course, because you're there every day and it's going to have to work with your target audience. So, you know, my customers here in Berlin are not necessarily the same customers I would have if I was to set up in Manhattan, in New York, in LA, or in downtown Boise, Idaho. Every region is going to have its own thing, its own personality, and you kind of have to follow that. I'm not saying you shouldn't set yourself apart, but... And finally, number 10, don't give up. Whatever you do, if it's your dream, stick with it. You got to give it a real chance to try to grow and flourish and... You know, see if you can actually make something of it. You can't start something in three months in, expect to be totally profitable and, you know, live in a high life and, you know, not even expecting it to pay all your bills. Now, I was pretty profitable when I first started. Uh, I started with $100 for materials and a card table. And that was it. And then whatever I made on those first few sales at farm markets and different little events, neighborhood events and things, I put that right back into the materials and the soap making and just kept building and building. And it took us probably three, three and a half years to go from part-time to full-time. Uh, spring of 2015, three and a half years. Spring of 2015, I opened my first brick and mortar over here around the corner. Now, I don't have multiples. I, I've shifted to a different store a few years ago, but yeah, and I went full-time. Now, some of that was sort of a, a leap of faith. You know, I still wasn't making enough at that point to totally survive on, but my wife was working and we took a little bit of tax money. I think it was like $2,000, which paid my utilities and rent for that first month and not much else. And uh, built a lot of my own fixtures, used old used furniture that, you know, looked kind of cool, just, you know, cheap and stayed budget friendly. And, the, and the, the old shop looked really sparse when I first opened it, but I spread everything out to kind of make it look a little fancier or a little more spread out. Now we have more product in the same square footage, so I've had to kind of build and assemble fixtures that would be more efficient in this space. But anyway, don't give up. That's, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest takeaway here. Keep at it. Don't let anybody beat you up over your style, your philosophies, your ideologies, your way of doing things, just don't let them get under your skin. And I still have to remind myself of that every day, whether it's the soap shop, one of my YouTube channels, even some of the comments I get on here, most of them are very supportive and you know, people seem to appreciate what I do on here most of the time. But every once in a while you get some very unhappy, bitter person who's gonna wanna pick an online fight with you. And eh, most of the time I'd say don't engage. Unless you enjoy that, then eh, go for it. All right, guys, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas, happy, healthy New Year, and good luck with your new business. See you.